things which um, is very relevant in relation to Blissan in many of my conversations with him always came out is of course that his activities encompass not only literary and theoretical work, and poetic work, but also the consistent production of reality. Initially, of course, as a member of the resistance, he fought for Martin Dix's independence from France. He encountered Franz Fanon among his very close friends. He then founded several institutes, uh, as for example in 1967, the Institute Martin Dix, a school that influenced the entire epoch. And of course, towards the later part of his life, was very engaged in founding this museum uh, for Martinique, which we're going to talk about a lot later today, which is the kind of departure of this exhibition, which he wanted to curate and, and basically bring the museum to Martinique. That brings us right away, of course, to Luc and his initiatives uh, curatorially. Uh, and there was a wonderful brainstorming here uh, a couple of days ago in the Villa Enfin. Maybe that we can begin with that, and uh, it would be great if you can tell us a little bit what, uh, what prompted you to, to work on this project, with, uh, which of course involves also Paul uh, Dujardin, which involves many different thinkers from different disciplines. Uh, so it would be great to hear a little bit more about uh, the genesis of how this all started. I wanted to gather artists and people out of the cultural field together to make a sort of like statement that could activate non-stop activism. Uh, there was an idea also to do a specific project with the show, which was actually the idea of like changing the place of the documenta from Castle to Brussels. But at this point, the idea of making a show, I think, is actually obsolete. And it's much more important to go into direct action. You have to look at things in a more open sense in terms of diversity, which I think is something we should keep within the framework of the situation, and also the discourse that uh, Hans also put up, Hans Kai, went into that specific direction. If we talk about the fear that is there in terms of globalization, which is inevitable, I mean, it's an inevitable change, it's a change we have to deal with, and it's a change we have to deal with in a truthful way, because there is a great deal of confusion and a great deal of fear and a great deal of anxiety towards things that are adverse and strange and could be actually open up new horizons. I think therefore it is very necessary to remain aloof and sharp and the element of reaction should be in a reaction span which should be very quick and in on all different layers. You were also saying when we spoke for the first one of this project that it was not only a project you as an artist want to take the initiative to not only wait for a bureaucracy and for all of these slowness, but you also said that you wanted to connect artists to other artists. Yeah. Maybe it would be interesting to hear a bit more about that and how this will exactly not. As an artist, when I work, I have the chance to, since I know a lot of my colleagues, is to immediately contact them, which is a, which is a speed and an element which is, goes above uh, frontiers, goes about countries, whatever. And so in that sense, you can make an adjustment and you can work with, 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 with a different speed, with a different, and, and the, the show in that sense also becomes a different entity. And also the fact that there will be, uh, without an element of generosity, there will be no culture. So, and that generosity should be enhanced within the sphere of culture in order to bring it back to, if we can talk about grassroots, if we can talk about people that so-called are not interested. It is also interesting to see that whenever you're interviewed for a newspaper, they have to find an excuse to formulate something about culture, which is insane. And this, this happens the whole time, the idea of actually underestimating largely a public, underestimating largely a possibility, and presumably making the boundaries before they're even there. And that is an, a, big, a, a big problem, I mean, it's nearly an education. Luke, I was wondering, since we made this <clears throat> exhibition here about mondialité, which is, you know, Glissant, one of Glissant's core concepts. And I, I think it's a very interesting initiative to create um, something that relates to, the idea, to, to, to kind of pan-European culture. What would be the relationship um, between the project and, let's say, the, the world beyond Europe? Or, or, or how, how, are, how are 
the links constructed between uh, a European cultural institution and then the world beyond? Of course there is a link and there is a sensitivity. You cannot, I mean, if you live in a global situation, you cannot get away from that. I think what is important also in the terms of Europe is actually if you look at the, the, the new states that were added very rapidly within the construction of the European community, mostly out of Eastern Europe, and the way they perceive their addition to the European community much more as a defense situation than something else. So there's, there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work to be done in Hungary. There's a lot of work to be done, especially in these parts of the world, also to create a sort of importance within the periphery and get away from the Eurocentrism, which is actually one of the major problems, which is a le legitimate problem, I think, to which people also react. The way that they are reacting is something that is geared up by the media, that is something else. So their diversity in information is a very important subject, and of course that diversity can come from everywhere in the globe. Now, Glissant, when I ask him about how he imagines this you know, institution, this artist and poet-run institution uh, for the 21st century to be. He, th he said, I think, and that's a quote, I think more and more that museums would benefit from being less solemn inside, that they should have fewer uh, of these big imposing interior monumental spaces and have more intertwining pathways and trails. So he, he sort of was asking for pathways and trails, because the idea of a museum today is to bring the world into contact with the world, to bring some of the world's places into contact with other of the world's places. And if you want to do that, we can't do it with the solemn and majestic design you find you know, in some museums. That would be much more interesting. The memory that I keep from my visit to the Guggenheim in Vivao is that I felt lost there, etc., uh, etc. Et so he talks about this idea of how we can actually develop exhibition architectures where we put worlds in context with worlds. So I was wondering in terms of your exhibition making and this vision you know, for a project of, 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 of Europe, what you thought about, about space, about the architecture of such a... Well, first of all, there are several uh, things to consider. There is also the element of a legacy that you have to consider. And if we are talking about museums and institutions, there is also, uh, there are quite, quite some problems. It's quite, quite funny because I'm, I'm on my way to a show by Dirk Snawa at the Musée Absent because we are in, in the capital city of Brussels where there is no museum for modern or contemporary art for the last, I don't know what, 15 years or something like that. There is a big problem within the institutional world itself in order to actually it's nearly an element of survival, I think, which is pretty important in terms of the cultural heritage in a way that has to be perceived. Because museums, in a sense, I mean, if they ever deal with actuality, they deal with that actuality from within the size of their collection, within the size of their memory. That is how they actually will respond back onto the actual world, which I think is an important thing. Now, to make this more dynamic, one should be having, uh, there should be an, a, a sort of lineage and access to different collections, interchangeability. Of course, not in the, in the sense that it will be uh, a danger for, for works that are too fragile to travel, but the, the ones that are not, it should be interesting to sort of make an exchange between those situations. And, of course, there should be also a lineage and, a, and one should make a link to the private world because otherwise it will never uh, survive. And so th those, are, those are things. Now, in the practice of, of working as, as a, a curatorial practice, this, of course, is too temporary. This is actually something that adheres to a moment but also has to create its own momentum in terms of being relevant. I think the word relevant or relevance is something that is really important when it comes to a curatorial practice or making a show. The one thing I also said to Barroso from the very beginning is that uh, seeing the very poor PR of the European community, and as I understood it, it was a question to give Europe a new narrative, which actually, when you phrase it differently, means what can culture do for Europe, which was a very belated question. Uh, whereas we have lived in a Europe that is mostly technocratic and has never dealt with the idea of a social cultural Europe, which we are going to be forced to adhere to. I'm very sure of that. That is actually the very positive, constructive point 
of all the negativism that surrounds us. That means that we will we'll have to create a stance and we have to create, uh, we will have to take a position in that point, in how we want to succeed in life and how we want to proceed in it, in terms of quality, in terms of what we actually think, and, and therefore all these interconnections are very, very necessary and important. That could not be a better conclusion, Luke. Thank you so, so much. Many thanks. <laughs>